right, good morning. Good afternoon, I should say. Welcome to the Pat Donovan Show. Hope you missed me as much as I missed you. Out of commission much of the week last week with a, uh, a bad back, which I've thrown out yet again. It's always fun when uh, you can't walk. So I was in and out of the office a little bit, uh, certainly out of commission, but back this week and certainly a lot more consistent from here on out. A great day of football action yesterday, a big night tonight for Tampa Bay, but yesterday was massive for the Buccaneers and, and all it was just a great day of football, um, very much unfortunately for Many people here in the Bay Area, uh, yesterday was a sad day as well, as we lost uh, a guy who lived right here in St. Petersburg, and Dan Weldon. And I I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm a huge auto racing fan, uh, because I'm not, but from everything you hear about Dan Weldon, the man was uh, just an amazing guy. And I've not met Dan Weldon. So personally, obviously not as affected as when we lost, uh, say, Leroy Selman almost a month ago. And, you know, in, in general, the Bay Area won't be as affected. But certainly we've lost now two great men uh, in the span of about a month. And, you know, Dan Weldon, for everything he was, he just wasn't here as long. Leroy Selman was just here for so long, and that's why it was a bigger impact. But, again, I had never met Dan Weldon. Uh, it's possible that I shook his hand or said hello to him during media day at the, at the Grand Prix of St. Pete uh, this, this past year. But if I did, I certainly don't know that I did. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you that I knew the guy, but from people I do know who did know the guy and, and they're, you know, it's like they're coming out of the woodworks um, as they did with Leroy Selman. You're just starting to hear all the stories about who this guy was in his, as an individual. And uh, it's just, it's really sad when you talk about a guy as young as Dan Weldon is, two young children and a wife. I mean, one of his younger son, uh, just, I believe, seven months old. And uh, it just, you know, again, it's a, it's a real sad day for the community. And uh, it's disappointing that it had to come on a day. Uh, well, it's disappointing, obviously, that it had to come at all. But to come on a day where the Tampa Bay community would have been so thrilled with what's happening with the Buccaneers and their turnaround yesterday, uh, the one thing that's at the top of a lot of people's minds today is the family of Dan Weldon, our auto racing expert, Damian Baldwin, uh, will not be in tonight, our, our regular scheduled studio shows. Uh, I have to be honestly, selfishly, I have canceled them for the evening as I have won a pair of sweet tickets uh, for the home opener for the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight, so I'll be out there. But I uh, exchanged some text messages with Damian this morning uh, to get his thoughts on the situation as he is, again, he's our NASCAR IndyCar expert and knows a lot more about the sport than I do. Uh, and certainly... Uh, knows a lot more about Dan Weldon. And, and, and I'm assuming when we were at the uh, Grand Prix of St. Pete that he did take some time out to speak to Dan Weldon. Um, and he just, you know, he just, he just basically said, make sure that you, you know, that you talk about how, how impressive a man he is, how impressive a man he was. Uh, and again, that's what you hear from, uh, you know, everybody, the, 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 auto, the guys I know from the Turn Left podcast over at 620 WDAE. Kyle Anthony uh, expressing just just a, a great deal of, of sorrow yesterday as well. And uh, I haven't yet spoken to Stephen Anderson about it, but I know those guys very big into the auto racing world and uh, just devastated. Steve Carney from 620 saw his, his comments on it. Uh, he's a guy that did know Dan Weldon, and he spoke of just the kind of guy that Dan Weldon was. And, you know, you know, you know, okay, when I moved to Tampa Bay, uh, I was I – was shocked at the first thing people, you know, when, when you, know, you meet people and you start talking about what you do or what you want to do, and, you know, me and my uh, sports bro broadcasting background would come up, 
it was amazing to me how many people would just flat out look at me and say, Warren Sapp's an a-hole. Completely unsolicited. Just could not wait to tell me that Warren Sapp was an a-hole. And at the same time, they also couldn't wait to tell me that Mike Allstott and John Lynch were just amazing guys. You know, like, wait till you meet those guys. If you get to meet those guys, they're amazing guys. Warren Sapp's an a-hole. Couldn't wait to tell me that. Okay, so you know. You know the kind of person uh, the people are. And everything I've heard about Dan Weldon is just that he was such an impressive guy to be around, the kind of guy that you wanted to be around because uh, he just kind of, you know, he's a lighthearted guy, having a good time, enjoying his life. And uh, it's, it's sad that it, it, he's passed on way too soon yesterday afternoon in that horrific car accident. Uh, and I know you, don't, you call it a wreck or something. And again, I'm not, a big, I'm not a big racing guy. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so I know you don't call it an accident. You call it a, a wreck. I've gotten a hard time about that in the past. Um, but certainly a tough day for the, for the racing world uh, and also for Tampa Bay because, again, this is a community that uh, – if you are a guy like a Leroy Selman, like a Mike Allstott, like a John Lynch, and like a Dan Weldon, uh, this is a community that just wraps their arms around guys like that. Uh, so there's a lot of sorrow here today. And I know there will probably be a lot of, a lot of critics of auto racing and especially IndyCar racing. And I'm sure there will be people who say that the sport's too dangerous and maybe it shouldn't even exist. But, you know, I really don't find that to be a fair assessment. Uh, anybody could be in a horrific car accident any day. And I know we're not going to be sent a couple hundred yards through the air uh, or be in something as unsafe as those vehicles are. But at the end of the day, you know, this is what happens. Uh, a young man just died not too long ago playing football. Uh, you could very easily come down and break your neck uh, off, off a layup or a dunk in basketball. There's just, regardless of the sport, regardless of the activity, regardless of your job, there's always going to be uh, some inherent risk. And some of those are going to be more than others. Some jobs you're going to have a lot more instances where people get hurt. And obviously Indy cars, with the way those things are built, I mean, I couldn't, you know, the first time I got next to one this past year at the Grand Prix of St. Pete, it's just amazing how little those things are. I don't think I could actually squeeze myself into one of them. And to imagine being in a, in a wreck in one of those things, you just can't. You really can't. There's nowhere, you know, most cars, you've got some room before the doors or whatever part of that car is being collapsed by the incident. You've got some room before it gets to you. Not with these things. But I, I think it's unfair to, again, say that People shouldn't be doing it because uh, what the hell business is it of anybody else's but the people who do it. And I think it's, uh, you know, it, again, it, it's boxing. You hear it about MMA. You hear it about even football. They're violent games. And as much as uh, auto racing is, is a different scenario and you're not certainly trying usually to make contact with another driver, uh, at the end of the day, if there's an accident, it's a violent thing. And today it's just a sad thing. Uh, again, I was uh, exchanging some texts with Damian Baldwin, our auto racing expert here. Uh, he also said I needed to give some love to the owners of the rest of the cars in that race who made the decision to call the race. And I'll certainly do that to an extent. Um, but to another extent, I mean, 
They kind of had to, don't they? I don't think you can continue on. I mean, I know you can technically, but I don't know how you do. I don't know how you continue on after something like that. So, and uh, sorry about that. That was a little. Uh, didn't think that would come through like it did. What it is is a call from my friends at pitbullgear.com. They're coming in to sit in with us, tell us about what they have going on this weekend. Big event. Uh, but uh, condolences certainly from he everyone here at TampaLiveSports.com to the Weldon family. We apologize uh, that we're going to cut this one short, but we do have some guests here. We'll be right back. It is the Pat Donovan Show right here on your home for live streaming sports in Tampa Bay. It's TLSTV.com. Keeps the tackler, gets pushed out of bounds, but... Deep. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis. And Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another Berkeley Prep touchdown. The tackler gets pushed out of bounds, but... Deep, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis, and Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another Berkeley Prep touchdown.
to open. And another ace to the same position. The tackler gets pushed out of bounds, but deep. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis. And Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another Berkeley prep touchdown. Open. And another ace to the same position. Welcome back. It is the Pat Donovan Show here from the Tampa Live Sports Studios in downtown Tampa. And you might be thinking to yourself, who's this guy on the screen now? I'm used <laughs> to uh, just the dumb logo and nothing to look at while Pat's yapping his gums. And uh, it, you obviously see the graphic behind him. It's our friend Alan from PitbullGear.com. Alan, how are you, man? Very good. Doing good today. Now, talk a little bit before we get into what you guys are doing this weekend uh, about the website, some of the stuff people can find on the website, and uh, uh, well, they know how to get there because it's on the screen. <laughs> okay. If Yeah, on, on the site, what we got is pretty much anything you could think of for a, a dog owner, pit bull breed specific, and uh, the collars and harnesses we sell could be obviously used for any breed. 
they're all custom made uh, we have original t-shirt designs for the owner and lots of education resources on there as well yeah that's right I wanted to bring that up first because um, I'm a big fan of pit bulls the best dog I ever had in my life was a pit bull and I mean that's not why I'm bringing you on, basically. If you guys just uh, threw a pit bull on T-shirts, I, you know, and that was it, we wouldn't have you in just to plug your product. But right. uh, I think what you guys are doing uh, outside of the website and, and for these dogs is much more important. So Thank talk you. a little bit about what you got going on this Saturday uh, over, at the, over at the fairgrounds. Uh, this Saturday is our annual celebration for Pit Bull Awareness Day. Uh, it's probably the biggest pit bull type event in the state of Florida every year. And what it is, it's just a bunch of people who own pit bulls or bully type breeds and even other breed type dog owners come out and we celebrate by showing the proper way to be with these dogs and how they act in public. And we have a lot of rescues that are going to be there where you can actually come out and adopt a pit bull oh don't say that my wife is watching <laughs> and if she knows there's an opportunity to adopt them uh she may not want to come because she may not be able to leave without one and we certainly can't have <laughs> another dog so <laughs> but that's awesome uh so if people are coming out uh and they want to adopt one of these dogs is there any kind of a fee uh is there anything you know so they make sure they know bring the cash bring a check whatever it might be that they need to do uh if they do want to adopt one of these dogs because a lot of them need good homes yeah there's um we, we are charging a $5 fee to get in, and half of that money goes towards the Miami Coalition Against Breed-Specific Legislation. Uh, they're a group down in Miami who's trying to get an ignorant law overturned where you can now own pit bulls in that area because right now you can't, and they do a wonderful thing down there fighting that. But as far as adopting, uh, there's many rec rescue organizations that are going to be there, and they all have their own different little uh, thing as far as payment or whatever. But uh, you can definitely come out and see the dogs for free. Uh, most of our events, we end up actually adopting five to ten dogs every event. So it's you, you guys, not not us personally, oh, but the people, people who out? come out. Yeah, and that's that's a big reason why we do these events is to get these dogs out in the public so they're not sitting in a shelter where you know they're scared and they're not showing their true sides and 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 you're right and you talk i want to talk about the true side because you know you, you would come in uh at the old studio and i'm gonna have to find out the rules so we can get a couple puppies in here because i okay. love having the dogs in as well <laughs> uh but you came into the old studio and you actually had a rescue with you uh a dog that you know had been through some abuse but yet it was still the most mild-mannered uh, amazing dog and, and talk about you know for people at home a lot of people have such a misconception of pit bulls and they think well if the thing's been through any kind of hardship at all now I've got to worry about my own safety talk about how that's kind of a mis misnomer uh, well a big thing with them I mean these dogs are just great companions and they they just want to do nothing more than please their owner and a lot of a lot of things that you read and it's just a uh, a media bias towards the dogs and even though I'm on the radio with you <laughs> but that's that that's what's happening and a lot of these stories the dogs end up not even being a pit bull type dog but these dogs can overcome anything I mean if you just do some research and see like what happened to these dogs that Michael Vick owned and how now they're therapy dogs and uh, live in great lives and great homes they, they're just a wonderful wonderful breed and if if you just read about them, you're not really going to get the right uh, peace of mind as you would if you come out and actually meet one. Yeah, they are unbelievable dogs, and I, I we talked about it last time. You know, I had a pit bull, and we lost her because she was hit by a car. And she was because at our old home, and I, and I may have told you the story, I don't remember. At our old home, we had uh, our runs kind of set up on our, on our little porch outside of our, our front door. Well, every now and then, one of the dogs would run under the porch and get the run stuck. And mm. we'd only have one run to put a dog on when we let them outside in the morning. Well, we had a, still do, a 15 to 20 pound little rat terrier. And we had our pit bull, Sasha. And if we only had one leash, if we only had one run to put a dog on, we'd put the little one on. <laughs> because that little rat terrier was the one that will run out and bite you or bark at you or just in general, be a little jerk a lot. Yeah. I mean, hey, he's a great dog. I love him to death. But, I mean, just he would literally, we, we'd be more concerned 
that that little rat terrier would bite you uh, than our pit bull. Our pit bull was, again, the most, like you said, compassionate, amazing dog we've ever had, smart. I mean, uh, and I'll let you tell some stories about intelligence. I'm sure you've seen it with as many dogs as you guys work with, but I could look at my dog and say, Sasha, uh, that toy's getting gross, you know, when a toy gets all wet. So that, that's getting gross. I don't want to play with it anymore. Go get a different toy. And literally, she'd put it in the corner, and she'd go get a different toy. This dog's not just compassionate, not just good yeah. dogs, but really intelligent as well. Yes, they are. Very intelligent. They, um, they, they can pretty much be taught to do anything from bomb sniffing to therapy to, you know, just being a great pet. I mean, and the one thing I need to stress that any owner who has a pit bull exercise the dog because these dogs are very high energy and they need exercise that that's like a fulfillment in their day and you just got to make sure you do that with them now uh again the event is this saturday it starts at i believe 9 a.m correct yes the gates will open at 9 a.m and it's the fifth annual pit bull awareness day again it's at the florida state fairgrounds uh if you live in tampa i'm assuming you know where that is if not uh you can certainly look it up but if not i I don't know what you're doing, but yeah. <laughs> if you live in if you live in the Tampa area, you certainly know uh, where the fairgrounds are. It starts at nine. Uh, talk about some of the other things that are going on. You mentioned the dog show before we came on the air. Oh uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a confirmation event where these dogs are actually shown for uh, actual confirmation, like what you would see on TV, like the Westminster and all, where people, you know, are have their dogs and they are actually judged in the ring to a, a specific standard. Uh, that is being put on by the BBCR, the Bull Breed Coalition Registry. Uh, we are also having a weight pull, which is a great exercise you can do with your dog. And we'll have, uh, that'll be an actual points thing where they earn uh, championship titles. But we will also have it open to where anyone can try this out on their dog. And it's, it's just a great exercise you can do around the house. Uh, we'll have a fun show where many... Uh, Dogs can enter different classes, and uh, one thing we're doing this year that we've never done before is we're going to have a best adoptable class, and this will bring everybody who has a dog that they're adopting, all the rescue organizations are going to bring them out in the middle of the ring and showcase each one of them so people get to, you know, actually see them, uh, not, you know, in a crate or just walk around a little bit. They'll actually be able to see the dog from all angles and be able to really see what kind of personality that dog has. Very cool stuff. Again, it's this Saturday. It's the 22nd of August. Oh, and don't let me forget the the big thing we do every year, and this is uh, sponsored by the Miami Coalition, is we do, at the end of the day, we do a candlelight vigil for all the pit bulls that have been lost in the last year due to BSL or just family pets that have lost. We really want to remember those dogs. Very cool, very cool. Now talk a little bit about, you were talking about the law that, that does stand uh, in Miami and, and some other places. I mean, there's quite a few places around the country uh, yeah. that have some pretty unfair uh, unfair laws about pit bulls. And, uh, we are the media here, but we're a little anti-establishment media to an extent. We certainly... Uh, we try not to fall into the, the everyday, you know. It's amazing how we'll, we'll crucify animals uh, for, for trying to protect themselves often enough. And yet, you know, Michael Vick gets talked about as an amazing comeback story. And it's just like, what? Like, exactly. I, I, and, you know, I don't know how you do the things uh, that he did to any pit bulls or any other dog. I mean, exactly. Period. I don't know how you do, uh, or any animal for that matter, to look at an animal and think about doing, I mean, you're not talking about, uh, even if the fighting was okay, which it's not, even if it was, uh, you're not talking about a guy who put these things down humanely. You're talking about a guy exactly. who picked dogs up off the ground and slammed them back into the ground until they died, electrocuted them, drowned them. I mean, just things, and, and to be able to do that to any animal, to me, says there's something wrong with you on the inside that you're just never going to fix. Yeah, exactly. And that that's the thing so many people who think he deserves a second chance and all that kind of stuff, they they all think that, oh, he was just fighting dogs. No, it goes way, way beyond that. Yeah. And it's just something that's not, yeah, it's not humane to do something that he did. No, and, and fighting him's bad enough. Yeah. Fighting is bad enough. But, you know, the one thing a lot of people and, and, you know, I often worry that it might hurt my, you know, my goal in life is to do play by play for the NFL. And I, almost, I often think it might hurt my chances uh, because I'm so heavily critical uh, of Michael Vick. But at the end of the day, I, I have to stand for what I believe in. And uh, I mean, it, it's just, 
it, it's it's not normal. It's not normal behavior. Exactly. And uh, you know, a lot of people have these negative feelings towards pit bulls because of the things they see on the news or hear on the news because uh, as many other dogs uh, that bite people or, or, or hurt people, you just never hear about it the way you do when it's a pit bull. Um, if you were talking to somebody who isn't necessarily anti-pit bull but might just be afraid, I mean, tell them, uh, you know, why they shouldn't be and, and, and maybe, you know, why they should get close to one and find out what they're really about. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, you got to – you got to remember, any any dog can bite. You know, it's it's not just a pit bull, a pit bull type. Um, but I, I just people should come out to an event like Pit Bull Awareness Day, or you know, go to a shelter. There's there's some great uh, shelter programs going on, and uh, go just go meet one. Even if you don't want to adopt one, go meet one and and understand what they're what they're all about. You you'll you'll be amazed at the the loyalty and the companionship that they'll give you. Um, as far as the news, I mean, the dogs are the most overbred dog in the world. And with that number comes, you know, stats that people can play with. But when you look at the stat of the uh, American Temperament Testing Society, pit bulls are tested and they score pretty much uh, in the high 80s, which is above golden retrievers and... Wow. Uh, chihuahuas and a lot of other dogs and and these are actual facts not where someone's writing an article and saying oh it was a pit bull to bit me and it gets blasted all over the media and then three weeks later they find out it wasn't a pit bull but nobody makes a story about that yeah just because a dog looks you know has a little bit of a boxy head or whatever it is they'll just exactly assume. and there are a lot of different breeds that have uh, a similar look i have a dog now that is uh, not a pit bull, but looks, you know, to a lot of people to be one. Um, and it's just, it, it's amazing how quickly people can be like, uh, you know, stay away from me with that dog. And you say, well, it's not a pit bull. And, and they want to bring it right over and start hugging it and loving it. And he could still be a, a mean SOB. He's not, but he could be, yeah. whether he's a pit bull or not. It's just, it really is amazing to me uh, the way people act. I would say if you're one of those people uh, who just dislikes pit bulls, you're ignorant. But if you're one of those people who just is afraid of pit bulls, you, you've been, you know, biased by what you've heard on the news, and that's very easy to do. You know, I, I sometimes draw a similarity to somebody who grew up in an all-white neighborhood. And, exactly. And, you know, they, they grew up around maybe racists, and they believe, because they don't know any better to an extent, that whatever those racist morons who raised them believe is true. You know, yeah. because they've never been outside. And then they get outside of that little, you know, clan-like community. And they learn <laughs> that people of color or Mexicans or whatever, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, exactly. it doesn't matter what color you are. And with dogs, it really doesn't matter what breed you are. So if you're one of those people who uh, does have some fear uh, based on some of the things, you know, my, my father-in-law's one. You know, I, my father-in-law and I have gotten into it a couple of times. When I first got, and he, he's turned a lot because of the way my dog was. Uh, but when we first got our pit bull, he was, you know, very much against it. And a lot of people, it's, it's just because of what they don't know. So if you're one of those people who just doesn't know and just isn't sure, I would, I would certainly, I mean, five bucks is nothing. That's less yeah. money than you're going to spend on lunch. Go out there, learn about a great breed of dog, and uh, have a lot of fun because uh, being around dogs is fun. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, get one more time, just kind of run through some of the things. I mean, for five bucks that people can do this weekend. Yeah, for five. Well, uh, another thing we're doing is anyone who walks through the door is going to get a, a raffle ticket. And that raffle ticket, Pitbull Gear is going to have a giant giveaway uh, raffle thing where that one one ticket will win this prize. And this prize is probably going to be valued between two and three hundred dollars of shirts, DVDs, magazines, collars. It, it's going to be well worth it. So not only is it five dollars you get you get that ticket, but half of it, like I said, goes to the, the BSL down in Miami. And from what Pat said about his dog, you know, kind of looking like a pit bull, well, that's what the BSL people, they, they don't want to see papers. They just say, oh, that dog looks like a pit bull. Yeah. We're taking it. You know, so people out there got to, you know, even if you don't own one, you, you got to be very familiar with this law because it, it could happen to your dog. And uh, Expand on the law a little bit exactly what it is for people. Uh, basically, it's any dog with uh, a pit bull type dog. Pit bull really isn't a breed. It's just a name of uh, a type of dog they came up with. And... Uh, 
when when you have one of these dogs in these places, uh, they they will come and take that dog and put it down. You're not allowed to own these dogs in, in these in these places, and it's just it's total ignorance, and uh, it just doesn't make any sense. I didn't realize they just put them down. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty they awful. they can come right to your house. Yeah, it's it's just total ignorance, and uh, the folks down in Miami, they they not only are fighting it down there and making good grounds, but uh, Dahlia down there goes around the country to different places to help them out because they, they really got their stuff together down there. Well, I know firsthand, like I've said, uh, how great these dogs can be and how great these dogs are. So if there's ever anything we can do here on Tampa Lot Sports, uh, you know we're behind you guys because uh, That's they're, awesome. they're great animals and you guys are doing a great thing for these animals and we really appreciate it. You know, you, we're very excited here about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their win yesterday. You wanted to talk a little bit about the Oakland Raiders, though. Oh, yeah. We're, we are big Oakland Raiders fans and uh, we, we kind of – I think the Raiders are kind of like pit bulls. They always get, you know, <laughs> the dark side. You know, they're always getting. But yeah, we we. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you though. Leave me in a room with four or five pit bulls before four or five Raider fan any, every any day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, you know, uh, certainly a sad thing with the passing of Al Davis. I think a lot yeah. of us, uh, including myself, admittedly, had poked a lot of fun at Al over the last few years. But uh, you cannot argue what he's done for the league, oh, absolutely. Uh, what he's done for minorities in the league, uh, you know, with, with head coaches of color and uh, women, uh, you know, high up in the office at the, mm-hmm. for the Oakland Raiders. So uh, pretty amazing guy, at the, you know, at the end of it all. Again, we'd like to, you know, I, I used to poke fun at him for, glittery hair gel towards the end but yeah uh, you know what a, a great guy for the nfl and uh it sounds like you you've uh know another great guy from the nfl cameron wimbley yes cameron wimbley is actually uh one of the owners of the bbcr who it's putting on the uh the uh confirmation part of the dog show uh what what great support uh, this is a this is a relatively new dog registry where you can register your dog and uh show it to win championship points uh it's very competitive. Uh, Cameron, uh, he's he's just a great guy, and uh, all you Florida State fans, I'm sure know him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's really great what the BBCR has done for Pitbull Gear. Uh, we are carrying their merchandise. He, you know, here's a here's a man who could have asked anybody in the world basically to do their merchandise, and they came to us because did he they, know you were a Raider fan? Uh, yeah, he did. But. <laughs> I'm not saying that's why. I'm just, you know. Yeah, but uh, just you know, we, we feel honored to be doing that stuff for them guys because they they're really doing a lot for the dogs where a lot of other registries aren't. And uh, they they even have a thing now with a competition uh, where your dog can compete in weight pull and obedience and stuff like that. And you don't need papers on your dog. It could be from the shelter, anything. And, uh, the, it gives them, you know, something to do where, you know, spay and neuter dogs can compete for titles, which is awesome. That is pretty awesome. And, you know, we spent some time talking about the knucklehead that did some terrible things, uh, to these dogs. So I thought we'd take some time to certainly talk about uh, a guy in the NFL doing some awesome things. So uh, came in here as a, uh, a guy who knew who Cameron Wembley was, but was pretty indifferent at the end of the day. Uh, now a big fan, uh, just to know awesome. about the positive things yeah. uh, that he's doing for Pitbulls. Because, uh, again, I think it's important. And I think what you guys is doing impor- uh, what you guys are doing is important. And uh, that's why we're always glad to have you guys on. Anytime you have an event, anytime there's anything you want to talk about, uh, certainly the door is open for you here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here. Talk a little bit about the Buccaneers Day yesterday and the opening of what seems like a new building, $40 million in renovations. I'll be there tonight. Can't wait. It's the St. Pete Times Forum. The Lightning uh, need a victory. Hopefully they get it tonight over the Stinking Panthers. We'll be right back here on the Pat Donovan Show on TampaLiveSports.com. Keeps the tackler, gets pushed out of bounds, but... Deep, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis, and Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another Berkeley Prep touchdown.
ace to open. And another ace to the same position. The tackler gets pushed out of bounds, but deep. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis. And Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another Berkeley prep touchdown. Open. And another ace to the same position. back it is the pat donovan show
want to thank my friends Alan and Connie Hudson from PitbullGear.com for swinging by. Drop me off a cool T-shirt and some passes to this weekend's event. Again, it's this Saturday. It's the 22nd. And it is at 9 a.m. It gets started. Five bucks to get in. I mean, come on. What else can you do for five bucks? Really? Really? What else can you do? Nothing. So, go check it out. Meet some really cool dogs, some really cool people. Uh, find Alan and Connie. I'm sure they'll be, I know they'll be there. Um, and again, it's at the Saint, uh, at the State Fairgrounds. I almost said the St. Pete Times Forum. Got the forum on my mind. I'll be there tonight as the Tampa Bay Lightning open up. Again, it seems like, and let me know if I'm crazy, it seems like a brand new building. And when I say that, I don't mean when you get in there, because I haven't been in there yet. I have not been uh, one of the people to get, to get the hard hat tour, like our friends over at 620 WDAE. Uh, so I've not seen the inside of the building yet. Very excited to do that tonight. Uh, but when you talk about $40 million in renovations, it's going to be like a new building. It's going to be like a brand new building. And it's just going to be cool. They play the Stinking Panthers. Game gets going at 7.30. And uh, I'll be there with my boy Ed Diaz and a couple of nice, sweet tickets uh, that I won. Thanks to a lot of good friends who voted for me. And the uh, great folks over at the Bacchus Event Solutions Foundation and if you don't know who they are, certainly look them up as well. Facebook, they have a website, BacchusEventSolutions.com. They do some amazing work for uh, for underprivileged kids in the community, along with Ty Timmons, of course, I hosted their or emceed their um, uh, high-speed, high-fashion fashion show over at the Kennedy uh, a couple months back. Amazing event that was, and uh, the money we raised that night all went to getting some tutoring as well as sports-specific training for underprivileged kids in the Bay Area. So that's that's an awesome charity as well. And you want to check out anything they have going on. Speaking of emceeing, I'll be emceeing this Saturday. And I apologize. I always get it. It's Bay and Nehan or uh, where's Joe Schaff when I need her? She knows how to say it exactly. Uh, it's the Art Center. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick here. It's called the Masquerades Ball and it benefits the West Coast AIDS Foundation, another of course important charity doing some great work. So if you're not doing anything, uh, just look up Masquerades Ball and it's not spelled as masquerade usually is but with the word AIDS again because it's benefiting the West Coast AIDS Foundation uh, at the end there. So Definitely get on to Facebook, get onto the website, find a way to uh, get out there. Saturday night, it's only $75 a person or $130 for a couple. And again, it goes to benefit the West Coast AIDS Foundation. There's going to be some really cool stuff there that's going to be auctioned off. I know the Tampa Bay Lightning donated a jersey autographed by the entire team. Very cool. Uh, I know that Steve and Julie Weintraub from the Golden Diamond Source donated something very nice as well so overall just uh, a very great event for a great cause very great I don't know what that means <laughs> a great event for a great cause and uh, you certainly want to get out there Saturday night if you can but how about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers huh four and two now atop the NFC South a division I said they would not win and yesterday they beat the team I said would win the division. So you've got to be impressed. Of course, like a lot of people, I was unable to watch the game yesterday. Uh, I've not been credentialed by the Buccaneers yet. And uh, they, they obviously, the game was blacked out. What an awful antiquated rule that is. And now DirecTV, who, let's be honest, I'm practically a honk for DirecTV. I'm always in here 
uh, telling you you need to get it, and you do. It's still amazing. Uh, the NFL Sunday ticket is, is uh, as well as the NFL Network, which you don't get very many other places, is like God's gift to man. Uh, however, I've noticed that now what I would do is typically when the Buccaneers were blacked out, uh, I would tape the shortcut overnight. And if you don't know what the shortcut is, uh, they basically direct TV uh, or the NFL Sunday ticket package, whoever you want to say, takes the game, cuts it down into about a half an hour. Literally. Literally, you can watch an entire game in a half an hour or less. It is amazing. And they basically take out everything except the play. Whistle to whistle. That's it. You get a couple of uh, ex explanations on penalties, maybe a couple of plays they let go a little bit past the whistle to let the broadcaster kind of finish his point that he's making. But for the most part, it's whistle to whistle. It's whistle to whistle. And you can watch the entire game in half an hour or less. I mean, it's, it's really really just an unbelievable thing. So what I would usually do uh, when the Buccaneers are blacked out is get up in the morning and watch the shortcut of the game so that I could come in here and talk to you about a game that I actually saw. So that I wasn't just doing what it seems like a lot of analysts seem to do which is read a box score, which I've got open in front of me now, so I can tell you some of the things that happened, although I didn't see much of them. Now I do have the Red Zone channel, which played some of the games, so I saw whatever they showed. Uh, but I find it to be a little disingenuine and being a bad analyst, which I do when it comes to the NFL, consider myself. I think it's being a bad analyst to read a box score and then talk about the game as if you know what happened. I know statistically what happened, but sometimes how things happen are more important than what happened. And I'll use the New York football giants and Eli Manning as an example. I was amazed early yesterday and through this week at how many people I heard say Eli Manning had a bad football game last week because he had three interceptions. And the second one was a pick six, returned for a touchdown, that basically ended the football game. So everyone said, well, he had, a, you know, he had three interceptions. One I know was returned for a touchdown, which basically ended the football game. He had a bad game. But if you took time to watch that game, you'd know that the defense for the New York Giants was terrible. They had no running game. The offensive line played poorly at best, and Eli Manning carried that football team. Not to mention the pick six that virtually ended the football game would not have happened if Victor Cruz does not slip and fall down. Because Cruz slips and falls down, he is not where he should be when the ball gets there. It hits him in the hand bounces off into the arms of a defender, and the game is basically over. Not Eli Manning's fault. He throws the last interception in garbage time, just basically heaving it up there. So again, the kid carried the football team, and then all week all I hear about is how poor he was. Okay, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you how amazing Ernest Graham looked yesterday running the ball for 109 yards with a long of 34 because I didn't see it happen. Saw a couple of carries maybe. I didn't see it happen. But to know that he was able to run for over 100 yards on 17 carries is big. Josh Freeman, no interceptions after already surpassing his total from a year ago. And again, I don't think that's a huge thing to worry about. I think if you thought he was only going to throw five interceptions again, you were fooling yourself. If you thought he wasn't going to have any hiccups because of how good he was last year, you were fooling yourself. It's a young football player. It's a young football team. And they're going to have hiccups. 
and they had one last weekend. A game I was unfortunate enough to see. <laughs> and I really, really thought the Buccaneers were going to bounce back this week and play a much better football game than they did in San Francisco. But I did not think they were going to beat the New Orleans Saints. I did not think they would force Drew Brees into three interceptions. I did not think they would hold that team to 70 rushing yards. And just based on those statistics, despite the fact that the Buccaneers once again had no sacks yesterday, it says a lot, I think, about how the defensive line's been able to play to hold that team to 70 rushing yards. And I know they don't run the ball a ton, and Drew Brees did throw for almost 400 yards. But I think that's a pretty good thing to hold them to three and a half yards of carry and to intercept Drew Brees three times. And we all know that throwing the ball for 383 yards means doo-doo in a, in a loss. It means nothing in a loss. The Buccaneers went up, and the Saints had to throw the ball. And one of the reasons Cam Newton's throwing the ball for as many yards as he is it's because the Carolina Panthers aren't that good. They're a hell of a lot better than they used to be. And they obviously have found themselves a quarterback. They're not the football team they were a year ago. But they're just not that good. All right, Tenard Jackson back in the action yesterday. How about five tackles, a pass deflected, and an interception. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk that Tenard Jackson would have an interception yesterday? Unbelievable. I know it was off a tip, but he was in the he was in the place he needed to be. And for a guy who hasn't played in what is it? How many months? Fifty six weeks or something like that without football? And he steps right in in the perfect time. and produces right away. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people think the kid's an idiot, and you can't be that bright if you can't put the weed down to play football. But at the end of the day, I'm rooting for him. I like second chances when a guy hasn't been a monster, when a guy hasn't done something so disgusting that he shouldn't be allowed back in the league. And Tenar Jackson has not done that. Couldn't put the weed down which is pretty stupid. But he sure as heck isn't a terrible person because of it. So I'm glad to see him back on the football field. Glad to see him produce right out of the gate yesterday. And uh, I hope it keeps up. I hope he steps away from the marijuana and has a good rest of his football career. And if Tenard Jackson can become the player he was prior to these suspensions, it's going to be a huge boost to this football team and for this Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense. And we're just going to have to wait and find out. But this guy's rooting for him. That's for sure. That's all we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Certainly get over to the state fairgrounds on Saturday morning for the Pitbull Awareness Day. I think it's an important thing. And uh, that night, get over and support the West Coast AIDS Foundation at the Masquerades Ball. I'll be your MC. It'll be a good time. We'll have fun. Until next time, until tomorrow morning uh, or afternoon. I keep forgetting it's afternoon now when I do this thing. Till tomorrow afternoon, I'm Pat Donovan. This is your home for live streaming sports in Tampa Bay. TLSTV.com. Go Lightning. Keeps the tackler, gets pushed out of bounds, but... Deep, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Robert Davis, and Nelson Aguilar will walk in again with another perfectly prepped touchdown.
to open. And another ace in the same position. 